Module 3 of Centricity Physician Office EMR Application Training. In this lesson, we will review chart updates, how to create and route phone notes, how to add a medication to a patient's chart and document a prescription refill, and start an office visit encounter to document vitals as well as reviewing some examples of forms. An update is a document you want in the patient's chart. Starting an update will create a document to be filed in the patient's chart. If a patient is calling to report headaches he's been having, from the patient's chart you can create a phone note update. Open the patient's chart by going to the chart module. Find your patient and then select the phone note action button. A standard phone note form will open. You will notice several fields that can be completed to help gather signs, symptoms, and requests from the patient. Click the Initial Call Taken By button for your signature stamp. Once you've completed your documentation, you click the close button and you will want to route phone note to the appropriate user. To route the phone note, select the end update button and you'll type in a summary of your call. And enter the responsible provider of the document. The Route To section is where you choose who the note is going to. The New button allows you to select from the drop-down of the people in your practice or the binoculars will give you a full list of the all the people in your organization. We will send this to Donna, the medical assistant, to triage the call. The reason for sending, for signature, action required, or a review, and the priority. We're going to label this important. Notice the comments section to type in throwaway comments. These comments will not be saved in the patient note, but just as a quick comment to the person opening the phone note. If this call was an FYI and no further action needed, the update can be final signed and filed away in the patient's chart. But in most cases, the user creating the phone note will need to route the phone note to the responsible provider or clinical staff member. So we will place the note on hold as it is a working document. The phone note was routed to Donna's desktop and you will find this on the desktop module. Notice the throwaway comment. Once she makes the call, she will need to document the call. To do so, she may double click or open the phone note. And she can type what was discussed during the call. Signing your entry with a date and time stamp is recommended, and using a quick text can efficiently do this. A quick text is a method of pulling in text by typing a shortcut. Now you would like to route this note to the provider for final signature. So again, click End Update and you want to route to the provider to let them know what was discussed. Another example of a chart update would be a prescription refill. This patient's calling for a refill of his albuterol. 
In the Action buttons, you would select Refills. The Prescription Refill Encounter will open, but to take the initial request, a phone note form is used. Your version may have a slightly different version of a refill request, but the information is completed. Patient has albuterol on his med list, and he wants a three-month supply. Fax to his pharmacy. The staff member taking the information will put the note on hold. Closing the form will show you a description of the patient's request, and then they would put the note on hold and route to the doctor. The doctor will then go into the same note, read the request, and click on the prescription pad. Select the patient's medication, if appropriate, and mark a quantity and refill. Verify the pharmacy. Change the authorized by to the doctor, and it's going to be faxed to the pharmacy. At this point, the doctor would fax the prescription and sign the form. There is the option of denying a prescription. Uncheck the refill button and go to the next form. This patient does not warrant refills as he needs an office visit. The doctor has decided to deny the prescription because the patient needs an office visit. The doctor will then sign the office note. Now let's take a look at what else may be on your desktop. Again, your desktop is your to-do list. On your summary page, you will see all flags and documents as well as the appointment book of the doctor you are supporting that day. It's a continual task to work your desktop. There seems to be a document that has been routed to you. Go to your documents tab for a more detailed view of your task and for any throwaway comments that may be there. By selecting the document and looking below, you'll see the details. See how it says preliminary across the colored text? This means that the document is on hold and is a working document. In the paper world, this would be the page of paper that is paper clipped to the front of the chart waiting to be addressed. This patient needs a call back. You make the call and document your communication. And again, a quick text can be used for your signature. You would then decide whether you want this note to go to the doctor or if it can be filed away in the patient's chart. We're going to sign this document. Now you want to go back to your desktop as your fallback place on the summary tab. You will const constantly be checking your appointment book. Notice the black dot that has appeared to the left of the patient appointment. This means the patient has arrived. We will now want to start an office visit update on this patient to document the vitals and then the route to the doctor to document the patient visit. Highlight the patient, appointment, and open chart. Now we've already shown you an example of a phone note and a prescription refill. Other encounters are started using the update button. The update chart window will appear. You will need to select an encounter type. 
Your selection here will determine what, what type of document your update will be filed under. You will see encounters such as phone note and prescription refills, but other common encounters include nurse visits, office visits, and preloads. Rooming a patient for a visit will be an office visit. If the update is started by someone other than the provider, this here will be where you need to choose the provider of the document. It will default as today's date, and a visit ID will link the visit to a billing number. You may want to type in a chief complaint under the summary line. We'll use knee pain today. And then you will select OK. Each encounter is made up of multiple forms. Each form is, struct is a structured tool to walk a user through a visit and provides fields that will capture clinical information that will feed a flow sheet. Not all fields need to be completed, but when a field is left blank, it does not leave a blank spot in the note. All information or values inserted within the form will create a note in the background. And once a visit is closed, the form goes away and your note is filed in the document section of the patient's chart. You may free type, although the text is not captured in structured fields for reporting. And it can be used to document a patient visit, but previous values can be brought in on the patient. The patient comes in and vitals are taken. Part of rooming a patient for a visit is to update their medications and allergies. Within any update, a change or an addition to the patient's medication list can be done using the action buttons. We like to say tabs are for viewing and buttons are for doing. Click on the medication action button and the patient medication list will appear. You can review these medications with the patient when they come in for a visit. By selecting a medication, along with a change and remove option at the bottom of the screen. This patient has told us he is now taking ibuprofen for his knee pain. Each medication in the reference library is linked to a code which is checked against the patient's other medications and patient allergies for interaction. You have the option of free typing a med, but an alert will notify you that you have added an uncoded medication, therefore it cannot be checked for interactions. So it is preferred to use the reference list. The patient tells you he's been on ibuprofen 200 milligrams and it will fall down into the defined medication section. If the duration is entered, such as 10 days, it will calculate the stop date. If the stop date is entered, the medication will automatically become inactive after that day. There's also a dosing calculator button, if necessary. And the last section of this form is the prescription pad. If the prescription is not being filled today, you will not select a quantity or refill. You will select historical as the prescribing method as the patient was just letting you know that this is how he takes this new medication. Prescribers do have the option to print the prescription 
or if they verify the pharmacy, they may fax it directly after completing the quantity and refills. Once you have confirmed the medication with the patient, you may select OK. And again, you have the option to change or re remove the medications from this page. If you make a mistake, you can select your previous entry and change back before it is signed. Updating the patient's allergies is very similar. Click on the Allergy button and review the patient's allergies and reactions. When adding a new act, when adding a new allergy, use the custom allergy list. As Centricity lists the GPI and KDC codes that are used for interaction checking. Notice the GPI and KDC code. It's okay. Say so left OK. The note is then placed on hold and routed to the provider. You have the option of changing the routing selection as you want to send it to the doctor as urgent and you may put where the patient is waiting for him. Okay, then you want to hold the document. The doctor will then have this note routed to his desktop with an urgent sign so that he can go into the patient chart and document his exam and findings. Other document types and forms include nurse visits. A nurse visit encounter can be set up with a variety of forms that would include services a nurse would typically do, such as blood pressure checks and vitals, flu shots, immunizations, medication administration, or even suture removals. We have several forms to help the nurse. A minimum amount of data is required to be entered into the EMR system prior to the patient being seen, and this can be done using a preload encounter. We would start an update and select the preload. The data that is typically preloaded are patient problems, medications, allergies, directives, risk factors such as tobacco use, preventative care items, and next due dates, past immunizations, past medical history, past surgical history, family history, and social history. Some providers prefer having past lab values also documented in the chart. All this data is entered and put together in a summary. The document is signed and all items will push to a flow sheet for trackable data. Once the note is signed, it becomes a permanent record. You may make an append to that permanent record if something was forgotten to be documented during that update. To do that, you would highlight the line item and select Append. You could do a brief append and sign the note, or you may do a full update and go back to what was forgotten to load the trackable forms. This is the end of Module 3. 
Module 4 of Centricity Physician Office EMR Application Training. Orders, Protocols, and Print Functions. Orders replace the traditional paper encounter forms for documenting services, tests, and referrals. Referrals allow the coordination of patient services outside of the clinic, such as seeing a specialist. And tests are items such as hospital labs or x-rays. And services are items you wish to be billed to the practice management system. You will need to be in an any update to create an order or start a new update. We will go back to the office visit that we started on our patient with knee pain. The provider has asked him to see an orthopedic for his knee pain, which he needs a referral. While in the office visit update, a referral order can be used using the orders action button. You can choose from a custom list created for your facility or use the search tabs. I will go under the search tab and search for orthopedics. Select the category and enter. Each order must be associated with a diagnosis. Select the new button to add a problem. When adding a new problem, you may also use a practice specific custom list or use the reference library. Checking the custom list first can save time because many of the problems you'll document are captured here. But we'll use the reference library and search for knee pain. Each diagnosis is attached to an ICD-9 code, therefore can be linked to an insurance claim. In this case, the type of the problem is a diagnosis of knee pain, which will go down to the description of the defined problem. You may also add a comment as to who may be managing the problem or when it may have been diagnosed. A start and end date may also be selected to manage the problem list. An example, maybe if a patient comes in for an upper respiratory infection, which typically resolves after three weeks, by selecting an end date, that diagnosis will become inactive as of the end date and removed from the problem list. Once you have added your problem, you can select OK. And now you have a chance to add your diagnosis to your referral order. You can pull the problem over and then select your authorized by. And in the instructions, typically please evaluate and treat is traditional. And referrals for insurances usually have start dates and end up end dates. Duration, six months to a year. Maximum visits. And they may be associated to a certain provider. By pressing the ellipse, you can open up the database to find the practice you want the patient to be seen at. Once this referral is signed, it can be either printed and faxed to the referring provider or it can be routed to an individual in order to finish the process of obtaining the insurance referral, such as notifying the insurance. And we'll select OK. Now let's say the patient needs an x-ray. This would be considered a test order. Again, you can select the Orders Action button. And using the custom list, categories, or search tabs, we will search for a knee x-ray.
we found the knee x-ray in this custom list. And we'll bring over the associated diagnosis. In the instructions, you can add details for the radiologist. And once your order is completed, you would select OK. And test orders can print upon signing so the patient can leave with the radiology order to bring to the x-ray department. Other test orders could be lab work, MRIs, CTs, and colonoscopies. Service orders are used to select the billing for the visit or service. Service orders are also entered using the orders module. And upon signing, a claim may be generated to the insurance company. Click the orders button, go to the categories, select service, and let's say this patient has a level three office visit. Again, we'll have to bring in the associated diagnosis. In the order details, you will have the option of changing the service provider, entering a description, or even change units of a service. And once the service order is completed, then select OK. Once signed, orders can also be changed. Going to the Orders tab, you will see a list of the patient orders. Once you highlight an order, action buttons will appear. You can change the test provider. Let's say if the patient wanted to go elsewhere. You can change the diagnosis. And you can also type in an administrative comment. In EMR, there are many, many options to assist in caring for the patient, including protocols, patient education handouts, and letters. When in a patient's chart, just under the banner, you will see the Protocols button. Protocols are based on the patient's age, sex, and guidelines. If updated appropriately, it can be used as a very reliable tool in management of preventative care. The graphing tool can help with tracking blood pressure, and printing handouts is also an option. Custom handout lists will be available in the drop-down box, and the binocular icon allows a full search on the handouts within the system search for knee pain. The patient's handout can be recorded in the patient's chart in a preview option. The handout may include instructions on how to manage the patient's knee pain. It may contain the referral information, follow-up instructions, as well as the patient's current medications. Patient instructions. You may also send a letter to notify the patient of test results, letters for preventative care reminders, referral letters, or even letters to welcome a patient to your practice. These letters may be built not only to pull in patient demographics, but also to pull in the patient's most recent test values and other structured data. Letters can be printed from the Print button. In drilling down to the Letters folder, you may select a pre-printed letter, but then still have the option of customizing before printing, and you can save it to the patient's chart. You also have the option of routing to yourself.
Other print functions are related to each chart tab. When you are in the Chart Summary tab, by selecting the Print button, you may print out a chart summary, or even immunization records. Same goes for the patient's medication list and problems. Medications report. Flow sheet. And all the documents. Medical records can send a copy of patient's medical records through the Documents tab. Print button. You can select individual documents or a complete chart. This ends Module 4 of GE Centricity EMR Application Training.